nobles, jealous of your absence, seek through the camp to find you. Good old knight. Collect them all together at my tent. I'll be before thee. O oh God of battle, steal my soldiers' hearts. Possess them not with fear. Take from them now their sense of reckoning if the opposed numbers pluck their hearts from them. Not today, O oh God, O oh not today. Think not upon the fault my father made in compassing the crown. I, Richard's body, have interred new, and on it have bestowed more contrite tears than from it issued forced drops of blood. Five hundred poor I have in yearly pay, who twice a day their withered hands hold up toward heaven to pardon blood. And I have built two chantries where the sad and solemn priests sing still for Richard's soul. More will I do, though all that I can do is nothing worth, since that my penitence comes after all, imploring pardon. My, lady. my brother Gloucester's voice, I know I errand, I will go with thee the day my friends and all things stay for me. Steeds for present service, nay. Mount them and make incision in their hides that their hot blood may spin in English eyes. Do but behold yon poor and starved band, and your fair show shall suck away their souls, leaving them but the shales and husks of men. There is not work enough for all our hands. Why do you stay so long, my lords of France? Yon island carrions, desperate of their bones, ill-favouredly become the morning field. They have said their prayers, and they stay for death. A very little, little let us do, and all is done. Then let the trumpet sound, the tucket sonance, and the note to mount. For our approach will so much dare the field. England shall couch down in fear and yield. Where is the king? The king himself is rode to view their battle. Fighting men. They have full three score thousand. That's five to one. Besides, they are all fresh. It is a fearful odds. Oh, that we now had here. But one ten thousand of those men in England that do no work today. What's he that wishes so? My cousin Westmoreland? No, my fair cousin. If we are marked to die, we are enough to do our country loss. And if to live, the fewer men, the greater share of honor. God's will, I pray thee, wish not one man more. Brother, proclaim it, Westmoreland, through my host, that he which hath no stomach to this fight, let him depart. His passport shall be made, and crowns for convoy put into his purse. We would not die in that man's company that fears his fellowship to die with us. This day is called the Feast of Crispian. He that outlives this day and comes safe home will stand at tiptoe when this day is named, and rouse him at the name of Crispian. He that shall see this day and live old age will yearly, on the vigil, feast his neighbors and say, Tomorrow 
is Saint Crispin's. Then will he strip his sleeve and show his scars and say these wounds I had on Crispin's day. Old men forget. Yet all shall be forgot, but he'll remember with advantages what feats he did that day. Then shall our names, familiar in their mouths as household words, Harry the King, Bedford and Exeter, Warwick and Talbot, Salisbury and Gloucester, be in their flowing cups freshly remembered. This story shall the good man teach his son, and Crispin Crispian shall ne'er go by from this day to the ending of the world, but we in it shall be remembered. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers, for he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. Be he ne'er so vile, this day shall gentle his condition. And gentlemen in England, now a bed, shall think themselves a curse they were not here and hold their manhoods cheap while any speaks that thought with us upon St. Crispin's Day! <laughs> My sovereign lord, bestow yourself with speed! The French are bravely in their battle set and will with all expedience march upon us! All things are ready if our minds be so. Perish the man whose mind is backward now. Thou dost not wish more help from England, cuz? God's will, my liege. Would you and I alone, without more help, can fight this royal battle? Yeah! You know your places! God be with you all! Once more I come to know of thee, King Harry, if for thy ransom thou wilt now compound before thy most assured overthrow. Who hath sent thee now? The Constable of France. I pray thee bear my former answer back. Bid them achieve me and then sell my bones. God, God! Why should they mock poor fellows thus? Let me speak proudly. Tell the constable, we are but warriors for the working day. Our gainness and our guilt are all besmirched with rainy marching in the painful field. But by the mass, our hearts are in the trim. Herald, save thou thy labor. Come thou no more for ransom, gentle herald. They shall have none, I swear, but these my joints. Yeah! Which, if they have, as I shall leave in them, shall yield them little. Tell the constable. I shall, King Harry. And so fare thee well. Thou never shalt hear Herald any more. My lord. Most humbly on my knee, I beg the leading of the varmint. Take it. Brave yoke. Now, oh, soldiers, march away. And how thou pleasest the God. Dispose the day. <laughs>